Okay, diabetes insipidus is a very interesting disorder, and it's something that I kind of see <clears throat> often in my work in a neurosurgical intensive care unit. So let's talk about diabetes insipidus and what it is and kind of what's going on. First of all, let's understand that diabetes insipidus is kind of a misnomer. Um, what happened here is when, when they first started uh, noticing this condition, they noticed that these patients were putting out a lot of urine, okay? Every, um, polyuria. And you know, in, in diabetes mellitus, that's one of the symptoms. So that was all they really had to go off of was the fact that these patients were putting out a lot of urine, and so they called it diabetes. But that's kind of a misnomer because it has very, or has, it, it's, it's not associated with that. What it's associated with is actually our pituitary gland. And what happens here is we have hyposecretion of ADH <clears throat> or failure of the body to respond to ADH from the posterior pituitary gland. And what happens here is this leads to extreme water loss. Okay, water loss to the to the sound of, of 4 to 30 liters of water, of urine, in a 24-hour period. And this leads to uh, excessive dehydration. So our patients start to put out urine um, up to 4 to 30 liters in a 24-hour period, okay? So from our posterior pituitary, um, that secretes ADH. And ADH acts to, it's called antidiuretic hormone, okay? We know diuresis, so so diuresis means to urinate, and anti means to not. So we secrete antidiuretic hormone to concentrate urine and decrease urine output, okay? And our, our pituitary responds to biofeedback saying we need to concentrate the urine more, we need more water in the cells, we need uh, less urine output, and so we secrete antidiuretic hormone, and that acts to decrease urine output and concentrate the urine even more. Now what happens here again, like I just said, is that we either have hyposecretion of antidiuretic hormone or the body just stops responding to it. So because it's not responding, we're just dumping, dumping, dumping tons of urine, okay? So that that's what happens with diabetes insipidus, okay? So again, really quickly, here's the here's the pituitary gland. Here's our posterior pituitary, which secretes ADH to act in the kidneys to decrease urine output. And more I mean more so to concentrate urine. Okay? So that's kind of what's going on here. Now, our, our pituitary gland secretes a lot of different things, but what we're focusing on here is the secretion of ADH um, to concentrate urine. So this isn't occurring anymore, and our kidneys are no longer concentrating the urine as it should, and we're just dumping water, okay? So the, some of the causes for this are gonna be neurogenic, it can be a stroke, a tumor, infection, or pituitary surgery. So our pituitary gland is located kind of right under here in this area. What happens, like, Neurogenic could just be uh, idiopathic, kind of just it, it occurs um, and, and it, it just happens, okay? It just stops secreting. Stroke, what can happen with stroke is, is as the, the brain tissue swells, it puts pressure on our pituitary gland and it prevents it from working as it should. We could have a pituitary tumor, infection could cause this, or pituitary surgery, okay? One of the, all right? Let's say this is a patient here. One of the surgeries that we see in the hospital is a transphenoidal um, surgery. So they actually go in here through the nose and can remove pituitary tumors. Now, a concern with that post-op is that manipulation of that, removal of that tumor, et cetera, can actually lead the patient into diabetes insipidus, okay? So those are some of the causes, okay? Anything that's gonna manipulate this or cause pressure on this, or alter the way that it actually is able to secrete these hormones can lead to it, okay, to uh, diabetes insipidus. So what happens? Well, our urine becomes extremely dilute, okay? We take urine-specific gravities, and our urine-specific gravity is less than 1.006, okay? The specific gravity of water is one. 
So if our urine begins to come closer and closer to one, that means our urine is becoming nearly just water, okay? Our patient's gonna become tachycardic. Why are they gonna become tachycardic? I want you to think for a minute about why they're gonna become tachycardic. Okay, so if they're losing tremendous amounts of volume, what's their heart gonna do to respond to that? All right, it's gonna speed up to try to respond to that and compensate for that decrease in volume, okay? They're gonna have extreme thirst, that's obvious. They're putting in all this water, they, need that, they want that water back. They're gonna have hypernatremia. Why are they gonna have hypernatremia? Right, so they're just dumping water and all their, that's really all that's going out in this urine is just water, water, just a tremendous amounts of water. And so they're left with additional sodium in their blood and they become hypernatremic. Risk there of going into seizures, uh, et cetera, okay? Neurological changes and then hypotension leading to cardiovascular collapse. As we, as we dump all this volume, we become tachycardic and we become very hypotensive as we lose all this volume that was uh, previously in our system. Okay, and that hypotension coupled with that tachycardic, tachycardia with the decrease in our volume can lead to complete cardiovascular collapse, okay? So what do we do for these patients? Well, first of all, we need to assess it. So we're gonna assess our urine-specific gravities. That's the first thing we need to do. So <clears throat> we notice our patient <clears throat> just put out 500 mils of urine. We can um, notify the physician. We can run a urine-specific gravity. We notice that our urine-specific gravity is 1.003, okay? So that would be consistent with diabetes insipidus. So what we can do is we continue to monitor that. We want to start replacing water, okay? Because what they're losing, remember, is water, okay? The patient's going to have a lot of thirst, but with a lot of these patients, they may not even be necessarily really awake or able to drink enough water. So what we can do is we can't give water through an IV, but what we can give is D5W, okay? D5W, the W part of D5W is water. So we can give this D5W, this dissipates quickly when it gets into the system and we're left with water. So we give a, a tremendous amount of D5W. If the patient has an OG tube, we can actually put uh, water through a feeding tube um, into the patient, right into their stomach. Okay, so we can set 100 mils an hour, 200 mils an hour of water into the patient. Another medication that we can give uh, is vasopressin. And vasopressin, we're going to titrate to a urine-specific gravity. Okay, and vasopressin is a very potent and powerful medication, and patients will respond very differently, but we, we titrate it in micrograms uh, per minute, and so it's a very potent medication. We want to be very careful um, with our titration of this and make sure we understand how to um, draw and assess urine specific gravities. Another medication is DDVAP or Desmopressin. That's a medication that patients can go home on. It's an oral medication they can take at home. We also want to monitor weights. If the patient's losing all this urine, we want to know how much they're losing so that we can provide replacement for that. Okay? All right. That's really kind of it with diabetes insipidus. That's a quick overview, but I think that condenses it in a way that you're going to be able to understand what's going on. You may need to watch this lecture a couple times just to kind of get everything that's going on here. Um, but if you have any questions, be sure to let me know.